Good morning. Wow, listen to the noise. I don't know if you can hear it at home, but welcome to come and worship with us this morning, everyone who's here and those who are joining us online. Uh, thank you for tuning in and watching this morning. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful white day this Sunday. I love snow. I don't know who else does, but I, I, hands up. Yes? Ooh, that's pretty slim pickings. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's great to, to be here with you in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, snow or not, it is always a pleasure uh, to be part of this uh, time of year where we are exciting, uh, expecting uh, the excitement of Christmas, the, the coming of Jesus, remembering it, but also looking forward to it uh, as the second coming of Jesus as well. Uh, just a couple of announcements I'd like to bring our way this morning as we uh, think about the various ministries of the church. Uh, Christmas baskets, uh, I know Becky is organizing Christmas baskets. Wednesday? Yes, okay, so Wednesday, this Wednesday, uh, I, between 4 and 5 o'clock, uh, I think, or at 4? Okay, so starting at 4 o'clock this Wednesday, those who want to be involved in helping to uh, sort and pack Christmas baskets and be involved in even delivery, uh, please uh, come here to the church uh, this Wednesday. Also want to remind you, the giving tree out in the foyer uh, has gifts for Hope Awaits, uh, Gate and Refuge. And so please take your tag off. There's uh, gift card boxes on the table in the foyer. And there's also a collection bin out by the fireplace in the foyer. Uh, we also want to remind you that uh, Soup Sunday is coming up. I know we, f we almost filled the gym last Soup Sunday, uh, which was wonderful. And so Soup Sunday is coming up again on January the 8th. There's a sign up in the foyer. Uh, please sign up to help in various ways, either bringing soup or set up or clean up. Uh, so please be a part of that ministry and help out uh, for January the 8th. We also um, have uh, mail folder. I saw people this morning with cards, cards and cards and cards, and they're like sorting and putting them in the mail folder. So please check your mail folders. Take materials out of them before they get too thick that <laughs> we need another box out there. So please grab uh, any items that are in your folders this morning. Also, uh, Creation Ministries is coming to us on January the 8th as well. Uh, Creation Ministries is a great Christian organization that ties in um, science with the biblical revelation that we find in God's Word in terms of how things were, were brought into this world by God and how things are sustained by His hand. So we encourage you on January the 8th to, bring, uh, to, to be here. But also, there might be some people that you know that might uh, not know things about creation. And you might want to invite them to come and be a part of that as well. We're going to have two sessions on that Sunday. One is going to take place in our service time. And then we're going to have Soup Sunday. And then a second session is going to happen after Soup Sunday. So uh, please, please be aware of that and look at the announcement in the bulletin in regards to that. I do want to um, also let you know of a new thing that is happening here at the church. Uh, there's a Spanish church that is actually meeting at Harmony Road Baptist Church on Sunday afternoons. Uh, this is a, a ministry of a Baptist organization, the Baptist Convention, uh, not CBOQ, but the General Baptist uh, Confederation, or I think it's Confederation, that uh, have a church plant in Oshawa, Spanish-speaking church plant. So on, t on Sunday afternoons from about 2 o'clock and for a couple hours, they're meeting here. Uh, it's a wonderful ministry. Uh, they're going to be doing a lot of evangelistic work, especially with migrant farmers. And uh, it's just an exciting time to watch them set up and be here. And uh, it brings a little bit of, of, of deja vu about uh, Dominican uh, as well in times that we've been down there. But it's a wonderful opportunity. So I invite you to please pray for this Spanish church plant. Um, they might be able to draw from people across the street. They might be able to draw from people in this community. And there'd be nothing more exciting than to see this church uh, plant grow and grow and grow. So just to make you aware of that, please, for your prayer. I want to welcome my brother this morning, Lawson Murray, and his wife, Karen. Great to have you here this morning and to be celebrating uh, the Lord's story this morning with us. So thank you, Lawson. Uh, you might have noticed on your way in, there's a small table uh, with some materials on there as well. Uh, we have uh, on there this Family Quest game, which Lawson spoke about the last time he was here, as well as a prayer calendar. So please be aware of that. Have a look at that following the service. And also, coming in, you should have received this, uh, which is a little booklet produced by Scripture Union. And it starts off, if you were God and you wanted to introduce yourself, how would you do it? And so it's a great little device that we can use uh, this Christmas to introduce people to who God is 
and how God reveals himself. So please, you should have received one of those on the way in. If you haven't, grab one on the way out. I'd like to uh, actually invite Hanny to come forward uh, with a message for us, please. Do I need that? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Um, just an announcement from the Board of Deacon. Uh, after a lot of prayer uh, for the last few weeks and actually probably a couple of months, we decided to have an uh, intern pastor. So I'm just bringing that to the congregation. Uh, starting in January 1st, we're going to have John Greenwich as our intern pastor for six months. And uh, that will cover at least time for the search committee when they're uh, looking. We're still working, so please pray for the search committee as well. But uh, just to let you know that starting in January, we're going to have John Greenwich, who was preaching last week, uh, for six months as intern pastor. We probably can extend that for another three, another three months after that. Thank you. Thank you, Hanny. And now I'd like to invite Michael and Barb Martin to come up and lead us in our Advent um, readings this morning and lighting of our Advent candle. We relight the first candles of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope, and the candle of peace. Now we light the third candle of Advent, Advent. This is the candle of joy. As the coming of Jesus, our Savior, draws nearer, our joy builds with our anticipation of his birth. From the book of Isaiah, we read the words of our Lord. Isaiah 65, 18. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. And from the New Testament, Galatians 5, 22, 25. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us pray. We joyfully praise you, O Lord, for the fulfillment of your promise of a Savior and what that means in our lives. Thank you for the gift of salvation through the birth of your Son, Jesus. Create us anew as we wait and help us see your glory as you fill our lives with your living spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. If you would stand with me, and we will sing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Adore him, oh come let us adore. 
next hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. is joy to the world. for this morning. We give you thanks that you came to break the curse as far as it is found, that uh, as we have been captive to sin and Israel was captive at various times, Lord, we give you thanks for breaking us free from captivity, that you give us 
the freedom to live righteous lives for you. We give you thanks for forgiving our sins, Father, and bless our time together this morning. Let us come with expectation to hear from you, Lord, through your servant Lawson, and uh, and to live out uh, the, our faith, Lord. Amen. Him that I love is, um, is about God's truth and grace and how that beautiful balance exists. And I think in that beautiful balance, he also calls us, as I remember my brother preaching back a, a little while ago about Psalm 23, about the beautiful balance that we see in that psalm. Because in that psalm, we see this balance of um, the busyness of life and the calmness of God calling us to be by these quiet streams, you know, these these green pastures. Now, I know it's not very green outside today, um, but just how he leads us beside these quiet waters, and there he restores our soul. And we need that balance, um, especially when we think of Christmas time and the hustle and bustle and the busyness. It's easy for us to, to put off um, that quietness that we need to allow God to speak his truth and grace into our lives. Uh, so I just leave that with us this morning as we enter into our time of prayer this morning. Let's Let's offer our time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for how, God, you are the one who knows the best for every circumstance. You are the one who knows what will happen long before it happens in our linear timeline. God, you see what we don't see. You understand, God, what we only catch a, a, a glimpse of in terms of our understanding. Father, you know everything, and we know so little. And Heavenly Father, I thank you that in that we can come before you humbly and acknowledge your sovereignty. God, acknowledge how great you are as our Father, as our Lord and Savior, as the Spirit that lives in us. God, I thank you so much for how you guide us in the right thing to do in every circumstance we encounter. And Lord, we come before you this morning acknowledging that we don't seek you as often as we should. And God, we don't, we don't pursue you in every small decision that we need to make. And Lord, forgive us for that. And Lord, sometimes we are hasty and we're anxious to do and not to sit beside the quiet waters and to be refreshed and renewed by you so that we understand you better to know what to do. So Father, forgive us for that. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will teach us how uh, to seek you out in every aspect of our day, not just on a Sunday morning or in a, a midweek Bible study, but, Lord, in every day that you will teach us how to just fellowship with you, God, so that we'll better understand our Father, who is sovereign, and yet who reveals himself in the beautiful form of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you will teach us that. For God, for those who might be here this morning that uh, aren't sure of their relationship with you, I pray, God, they will be drawn to you this morning, that they will understand your truth and your grace and how magnificent you are, God, and how much you love them and how much, God, you call all of us to draw closer and closer to you. Heavenly Father, this morning I want to praise and thank you for good news that we have witnessed this week. Uh, Gwen's Lord MRI is set for December the 9th. Uh, this past Friday it took place. We are thankful, God, for that MRI. We are praying that it would happen, and it happened, and she's getting ready, Lord, for surgery next week. God, I praise you for the safe delivery of Elijah to Abigail and Wade. God, I praise you for that. God, I do also praise you. Uh, for Kayla's baby arriving this week, Heavenly Father. We know there's come some concerns and there's, there's need there, Lord, but just thank you for uh, mom and baby, Lord, who are, who are well. I praise, heaven, praise you, God, for the Spanish church that is meeting here on Sunday afternoons. 
Uh, Father, just an opportunity for us to expand the kingdom, uh, Lord, through our brothers and sisters in a different language, uh, God. Uh, ministering to people maybe that we're not connecting with right now in our community, God. I just thank you for that ministry, and I pray a blessing over this church. God, I do want to lift up Dave and Nancy to you, God, who are battling COVID and have so many health issues also in their, in their lives. God, just lift them up to you this morning. For Gwen's surgery, God, just guide the doctors this Thursday. Guide the nursing and the care team for her. Help Gwen, Lord, to establish in her life this peace of sitting beside waters before she goes into surgery, God, so that she can have full confidence, Lord, that you are with her. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are receiving treatments of different kind this week, Lord. Just, just watch over them, protect them, Lord, and give them strength beyond their own. And give them a faith, God, that continues to hold on to you and to cry out to you, Lord, in their struggle physically. I lift up Kayla before you, Lord, and her child who has been born this week. Lord, be a strength for this little baby. And uh, help Kayla, Lord, to appreciate uh, your goodness to her. And God, the, the blessing that comes from God, who is the creator of all life. Father, I lift up before you Kira out in Calgary who is trying to establish ministry, uh, Lord, in, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, Youth Unlimited, God, and just trying to, to uh, get uh, support and all the different needs that she has, God, to establish herself in that ministry. I thank you, God, for leading her in that ministry. Uh, Lord, I, my heart was glad to hear of her ministry out there working with young people. So, Father, bless her and John Mark as they uh, go in this direction. And Lord, provide for them. God, we know that families uh, celebrate Christmas, but for many families, Lord, Christmas is a difficult time. So strengthen families, Lord. If families need reconciliation, I pray for reconciliation uh, with you, God, and with each other. I pray, God, you will help families, uh, especially those who might be missing loved ones this year for the first time, God, to be uh, the strength for them. And Lord, help them to praise and thank you for your many, many blessings. Be a comfort to them, Lord, I pray. Uh, for Millie, God, her son-in-law's uncle who has been diagnosed with cancer and it's in his lymph nodes, Lord, he's going through treatment. Lord, he needs to know you. I pray, God, you will provide for him and enlighten his heart and mind to receive you, Lord, as he endures this struggle in his life. God, you are so good. And I thank you, God, for the many connections we have in ministry. This morning, Lord, I thank you for Scripture Union. Uh, Lawson uh, and Karen uh, here, Lord, uh, committing themselves, God, to this ministry. And we just see the fruit of this ministry all around us and even within us, God. I thank you. And I pray, God, you'll continue to provide for Scripture Union as they bring the gospel. Uh, Lord, with a real passion and zeal for explaining who God is into communities, into people's lives who don't know who you are, God. I just thank you, Lord, for this ministry and for its focus. And I thank you for this uh, lovely minister of the gospel, God, who comes and brings the word of God to us so faithfully each time he speaks. I thank you for his blessing us, Lord, um, and your blessing to us through the words that he brings each Sunday. God, I lift up you. This is your time, Lord, to speak to us. Give us ears, God, to hear what you'll have to say to us today. Lord, move us closer to you. Give us a heart for you. And as we wait, Lord, in anticipation of Jesus' second coming, already experiencing the joy of his first coming, Lord, I pray that you will help us to be ready for his return. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The answer is no. A number of you have asked me, will I be preaching on family again? And I looked at the date and I said, oh, I'd love to, but it's Christmas. So we are going to talk about Christmas in just a moment. But first, I've invited Karen up because you had to get a sense of family. <laughs> 
because the last time she came, she came with Jonathan, and she hasn't come with me, and I managed to get her to come <laughs> along this time round. <laughs> All right, it's chapter one of the Gospel of John, reading from verse one to verse 17. <laughs> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Here we go. Thank you. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. titled this message, The Purpose of Christmas. God has a purpose for everything. He has a purpose for our lives and for everything else. So what's the purpose of Christmas? Why did Jesus come to this earth? Why do we celebrate his birth. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus came for three reasons. Number one, Jesus came to earth to erase misconceptions about God. Now, people believe all sorts of strange things about God. While well, more than 95% of North Americans believe in God Many have a distorted image about him. That's because our inclination is to try and picture him in our own image. But God isn't meant to be a figment of our imagination or a creation of our desires. God wants us to know what he's like. So he came to earth in a human form in the person of Jesus Christ. And in so doing, he destroyed all the stereotypes about God. Now, how did he do this? He did this by living right and teaching what is right. John 18 and verse 37 in the New Century Version says, this is why I was born and came into the world, to tell people the truth. Jesus told us the truth. You're highlighting in your phone or underlining in your Bible, that's, that's a key part of that verse. He came to tell people the truth. And by telling the truth, he cleared up any misconceptions there might be about God. 
John 1 and verse 18 says, No one has ever seen God. The only God who is the same as God has made him known. Pay attention to that little phrase, made him known. Why don't you read this verse with me? Let's say it together. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is the same as God has made him known. That's what we read in John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Christ has come to make, uh, to make God known. Jesus, if you like, is God with skin on him. Pinch the person next to you. Just to make sure we're alive, we've got skin. Jesus was God, is God, with skin on him. John 14 and 9 says, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Man, I would have loved to have been alive just over 2,000 years ago in Palestine to see God with skin on him. Think about that. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. The late Billy Graham said, when I want to know what God's like, I take a long look at Jesus Christ. You're wondering what God is like? Read the Gospels. Meet with Jesus. And you'll see what God's like. When Jesus was born, he was no ordinary baby. He was God in the flesh. In fact, that's so important. We have a special theological term for that. He was God incarnate. Luke 2 and verse 32 says, Jesus is the light to reveal God to the nations. Pay attention to that little word light. Isn't it wonderful? All around us, we've got light. We recognize at Christmas time that light is a special part of the story. And linked with that word light in our text is this, to reveal God. Light reveals, doesn't it? When we're in the darkness, we can't see. But when the light comes, it reveals everything. Christ came to reveal God. Light helps us see things as they really are. When we're in the dark, we get disoriented or confused. That's why there's Christmas. That's why Jesus came. He came as the light to help us see what God is really like. Secondly, Jesus came to earth to express the love of God. To express the love of God. Now, We've probably all heard that little saying, Jesus is the reason for the, se for the season. You heard that? Jesus is the reason for the season. Christmas is about Jesus. And often in our culture, we want to, particularly as Christians, express that truth. Especially when the world seems to be missing the fact that this is what it's all about. God didn't send an angel. He didn't send a prophet. He didn't send an assistant or a representative. I'm not sure if he has assistants in heaven, but he chose to send Jesus. He came himself as the second person of the Trinity. John 3.16 in the New Living Translation God so loved the world, so loved the world that he gave his only son. But there's more. 
Not only is Jesus the reason for the season, we are the reason for the season. Isn't that cool? Turn to the person next to you and say, you are the reason for the season. Isn't that great? We are the reason for the season. He came so we would understand him and know how much he loves us. If it wasn't for you and me, there would be no Christmas. Why? Because we need what Jesus came to bring. And what did Jesus bring? His presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. I know some of you immediately heard, oh, presence, T-S. No, he came to bring his presence. At Christmas time, though, we are looking for the perfect present, aren't we? I have to tell you, my driveway is so busy at the moment. I have a wife who just loves to order Online, it's like another truck the next day pulling in with another box or parcel of something for one of those 11 grandchildren. Man, if I was to be born again, not as a Christian, but back into the world, I would love to, of course, and I am as a Christian, I would come as Karen's grandchild. She drove into the garage last night. We've already bought Jonathan's eldest a wonderful Christmas present. It's going to be, a, it's a big fish tank. She's going to have fish and it's got all the stuff to go with all of that. She climbs out of her car. She's got another thing. I said, who's that for? That's for Charlotte. I said, but we've already got Charlotte's present. No, no, but this, she would also like this. <laughs> Presents. But the best expression of our love isn't our presence, T-S, it's our presence, E-N-C-E. It's being there. In November 1996, I immigrated to Canada ahead of my family. So I left South Africa and flew over in November. My family was scheduled to join me two months later. It's the only way we could make it work. You can imagine the circumstances. Loneliness and longing on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Love separated by the equator. Hearts divided by the northern and southern hemisphere. And just before Christmas, I was staying with a friend in Etobicoke, a letter arrived from my daughter, Christy. She was 11 years old at the time. And I opened the letter and there was this piece of red paper. It had sort of been torn and she'd written on it. She'd written a poem still got that. This is her poem. Eleven years old. Twas Christmas Eve, I do believe, but still we were quite sad. The tree was lit, the stockings hung, and all we missed was dad. Though we were in a summer climb, we'd rather be with you this time. Have a Merry Christmas, Dad, and a New Year, too. And don't forget the child at home who's thinking about you. So as I kneel next to my bed and pray a silent prayer, my thoughts are all for you, Daddy, for your good health and care. I I cried then, I almost feel like I need to cry again. Especially when I read 
and all we missed was dad. Christmas, people want our love. They want us to be there. 1 John 4, verses 9 to 10 says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son into the world that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, that God sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. See that little phrase there, showed how much he loved us. Real love is something shown. Real love is about giving, about sacrifice, about setting aside my desires and my needs and my preferences to help someone else be all that God meant them to be. God showed us how much He really loved us by sending His only Son into the world that we might have, as it says in that text, eternal life through Him. You know what amazes me about God's love? If you, or you, or you, or you were the only person in the world, Jesus Christ still would have come to earth to live and die for you so you could be with him forever in heaven, in eternity, in the new Jerusalem. If there was only one, he still would have done it because that's the measure of his love. This is the purpose of Christmas. Jesus came because you matter to God. He came so you could experience his love for yourself. He came to let you know that you're not alone in this world. He came here to be here for you. This is love. Thirdly, Jesus came to earth to enable a relationship with God. Ephesians 1 and verse 5 says, His unchanging plan. I love the first part of that verse. It means this was a plan that was established way back in eternity past. It was always His plan to have a relationship with us. His unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his family. I had to get the family in there. To adopt us into his family, talking about the family of God here, by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Christmas is about family, about God's family. The reason why we're alive, the reason why we're breathing. Take a deep breath. <gasps> we're alive, people. We're alive. The reason for that, the reason why our hearts are beating is because God wanted family. You are not an accident. It doesn't matter whether your parents planned you or not. What matters is that God planned you. 
There are no accidental babies. You were born because God made you to love on you. Our youngest of the grandchildren is, what's he, just six months now? Just turned six months. Man, and I look at little Tobias, Toby, Jonathan and Megan's youngest, and you just want to love on the little guy. And I can see some of you sitting here, some of you parents and grandparents, and you're thinking of your little girl, your little boy, and even when they get bigger, and you just want to love on them. Hey, Beth, don't you just want to love on, on, on Michelle? Look at that. Give her a hug. So much more with God and us. He loves us even more than we love our own. This is what Christmas is all about. It's about God doing everything possible to connect with us. It's about God wanting us to know that He loves us and wants a relationship with us. Let's say together, God loves you. God loves you. And let's say together, God wants a relationship with me. God wants a relationship with me. Now you can get those first two purposes of Christmas, but miss the whole point of Christmas if you miss the third purpose. You can understand what God is really like and even know that God loves you, but if you're not in the family of God, you've missed the whole point. Thirty... uh, No, in fact, it's more than that. More than 40 years ago, I met this smashing woman, Karen Tehoven. Yes, she's got some Dutch background. As I told you at the last time I was here, she's also the United Nations. I told them about your DNA. We got to know each other. We were both at Teachers College in Johannesburg, South Africa. And we fell in love. But getting to know each other and falling in in love wasn't enough. We needed a permanent relationship. So on the 26th of March... 1983, we stood in front of a packed church. Her father was the pastor, so you have to invite everybody. And we said two words that changed everything. I looked her in the eyes, and I said, I do. I do. And this coming March will be 40 years of a permanent relationship that we committed to each other before God. I do. Have you said, I do, to Jesus Christ? Jesus came for a relationship. He didn't come for rules or rituals or religion. Notice all the R's. He came for a relationship. 
So the question is, have you ever said, I do to Jesus? Have you ever said, I want to be a part of God's family? Have you ever said, I need Christ's forgiveness? I want to learn to love and to trust Him. I want to live out the rest of my life for His purposes. If you haven't said, I do, I don't believe in chance we say it in Canadian, in chance encounters. You are here for a reason today. Christmas is the time to say to Jesus, I do. I do. Many, many years ago, one of the early explorers in Montana was walking along a hill when he fell down a hole. He was stuck in the darkness in this remote place for more than a week. All alone. Down this hole. In the darkness. Every day he cried out, Help! Help! If there's anyone out there, help! Lovely echo in here. I could almost feel that I'm down in a hole, in a dark cave. <laughs> If I was a child, I'd keep doing it. It was such fun. <laughs> Fortunately, another guy came along and he heard this faint cry for help. And he found the hole and he got the other guy out. And during the process of digging out the guy who had fallen down the hole, the Lewis and Clark caverns north of Yellowstone National Park, were discovered. When the man was listed, lifted to the surface, his rescuer asked him, how did you hold on to hope day after day after day after day down there in the dark? The man who had been in the hole said, it was one little pinhole of light that was coming through. And I kept focused that one ray of light. Christmas is about being focused on the light. Jesus is the light of the world. You discouraged, depressed, maybe hurting. You need to know that God sees you, cares for you, knows what you're going through, wants to help you. There's no problem too big, too wide, too deep too high for his love. So don't miss the third purpose of Christmas. It's not about what's under the tree that's important. What's important is the one who hung on the tree to enable you to have a relationship with God. This is how much Jesus loves you. To eternity. 
He was born to die for you. Born to save you from your sins. Born to adopt you into his family. You're not here by accident. God wanted you here because he wanted you to know how much he loves you and how much he wants you in his family. Yes, God's seen every tear, every hurt, every heartache, every time you've blown it. He's seen the good, the bad, the ugly. He still loves you, still wants you in his family. You are the reason for the season. Jesus wants a relationship with you. He wants you to say, I do. That's the purpose of Christmas. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving us so much. So much so that you were prepared to step into this pigsty of a world to love on us, to live and to die in order to reconcile us to God, a sin sick people with a holy God. And thank you that you conquered death, so that we might know the one who is life and life eternal. Thank you that you came to have a relationship with us. Thank you, just as I'm standing up here in the front of this church, that you are standing here invisibly, yes, looking to each person in this auditorium, just as I possibly looked at Karen many years ago when we got married. And as you look at each one, you're wanting to make permanent, forever commitment to love the other. And you want us to say, I do. There's someone here this morning who knows that Jesus loves you. You felt him reaching out to you, inclining your heart to him. And you know, little by little, you've been falling in love with him too. It's the time for you to say, I do. I do. There's someone here this morning, just slip your hand up to let me know so that I can pray for you. We're not going to do anything else. I'm not going to embarrass you or anything. Anyone who wants to say to Jesus this morning, I do. I come into a relationship with you.
Lord, thank you for, for being the reason for this season. Thank you that we too are the reason for the season. I ask, Lord, that as we leave this place, as we continue through this Christmas time, that every one of us will be absolutely sure that we are fully committed to you. Even now, as we get to close the service in a short while, Lord, don't let any person leave this place who has not said, I do. For Lord, we know that the greatest gift this Christmas, that we can give ourselves is to be part of your family. Thank you, Lord, for making that possible. Thank you that your presence is the greatest present we could ever receive. Thank you for our time together this morning. In Jesus' name. Oh, God bless you. If there is an opportunity to squeeze me in with your interim pastor, I do have a few more family messages for you. God bless you. angels.
joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us online, those of you who are online. Uh, just a reminder, the table out in the foyer, uh, Lawson brought some uh, very good items. Uh, we had some people asking this week in the church, where are the church calendars? Where are those calendars that, you know? And, and we didn't get a lot in, but Lawson brought some calendars. Uh, they're family prayer calendars uh, for the cost of $12. You're welcome to uh, see him at the table and bring one home to your family or to your friends. At the end of Jude, Jude leaves this beautiful blessing, and it's one I'd just like to share with us. So close your eyes as we bow before our God. You, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. And to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. May God bless you this week as you serve and minister for him.